<clears throat> Hello and welcome to uh, another Lightroom uh, CC video uh, about some of the um, other features in a Lightroom CC. Uh, we're going to do a few in this sequence. The first one we're going to start off with today is in the effects panel. It's called vignetting. So let's head over to Lightroom, take a look at what we're doing and uh, show you how this works. It's pretty simple. So um, once you've got your photos that you want to work on, head on over to uh, the develop panel and uh, the ex uh, exposure panel. And then um, at the bottom of that is an, uh, a panel called effects. And that's where we're going to be in. We're going to be in effects. So open that up. And uh, we've worked in here a little bit with texture clarity and dehaze, but at the bottom of that panel are two more uh, options. We have vignette and grain, and that's what we're going to cover right now. So vignette, what is that? Let me show you. The easiest way to show you is just to show you how it works. So if you, you can make the corners darker or make the corners brighter. What this is designed to do is to um, fix uh, an oftentimes a defect in a lens where the corners are usually they're a little darker. Um, um, yeah, so lenses often, especially wide angle lenses, will be dark in the corners. Uh, so you could potentially brighten them up a little bit. I don't use it that way very much, honestly. I don't mind a little vignette, a little darkening of the corners. Here's why. I like it a little bit because it almost creates a simple, easy to create spotlight around the middle. Here's what I mean. So let me just show you how this works. So I'm just gonna take the vignette slider and go a little to the left, which will make it darker. So I'm gonna go, I don't know, I'm just kind of eyeball this, but usually I don't go much beyond minus 20, depending on the photo I'm looking at. It doesn't look very much different. It doesn't look super different. So, um, yeah, so here's without it. Oops, that's the wrong button. Here's without it. Here's with it. So you can see it darkens the corners just a little bit. And what that does is it kind of holds the attention in the center part, which is a little brighter now. And usually the more middle part of the photo is where you want people to look. So. That's how I use this. I usually put some vignetting on my photos. I just like how it kind of corrals your eye and keeps you in the middle. There are some uh, additional controls in vignetting. So uh, if you just click on the, the little triangle that's to the right of the number of the vignette you've entered, um, you will see these other controls. So we've got a midpoint, a roundness, feather, and highlights. I usually don't use them. I usually just use the vignette, but if you want to see how they work, let me show you. So I'm just going to take the vignette to all the way to minus 100 to make it easy to see. And then the midpoint, what that does is it moves it. If you go to the left, it makes it uh, uh, the vignette larger. It covers more of the photo. If you go to the right, it makes it smaller. So basically um, you've got less of the photo. Uh, I mean, less of the vignette happening. Um, let's go with roundness. So it's an oval to start. If you go to plus 100, it makes it more of a circle. Um, you kind of get a kind of corner effect here, like a, almost like a filter. Uh, and if you turn the feather all the way down, you kind of get that look or you go that way, um, which maybe is kind of fun on occasionally. I hardly ever use it that way, but it's an option. So again, vignette, uh, it's, it's an effect. That's why it's in the effects panel. Uh, I try and use it in a subtle way so that it's not, ooh, look at my vignette, but it's more, uh, it's, you don't really notice it, but it's enough there that it helps keep your attention in the middle of the photo. That's how I use it. And I hardly ever do white vignettes. I personally don't like that look, so up to you though. All right, so I'm gonna leave my vignette alone there. I'm gonna close up the panel. And then uh, the, the last, uh, effect we have is grain. And what grain is doing is it's um, adding noise to your photo. It's adding uh, an effect that looks like film grain noise from the olden days. Uh, I'm going to zoom in on the photo so you can see this better. There's a bunch of different ways to zoom on the photo. At the bottom of the window here we have a fit and it says it's at 100%. So I can zoom to let's say 400%. And once I'm zoomed in, I can just click and move around. Because what I want to do is show you uh, how this works. 
Um, so I'm zoomed in, here we go. I'm gonna turn up the grain. So I'm gonna turn the grain up, there's the grain. You really have to zoom in to see it. When you're zoomed out, you can't see it very much. I mean, you kind of notice it here, but it's it's not super as obvious as when you're zoomed in. So let's stay zoomed in for a minute and let's just keep talking about this. Within the grain, we also have some other options uh, for the tool, for the effect. So I'm going to click that little triangle and we see we have size. So I can make the grain larger, which is making the photo softer. I can make it rougher. You're completely obliterating the photo. <laughs> Turn everything up. Yeah, there you go. Don't do that. Don't do that. So um, here's how I've seen people use this. Uh, I don't use it that much. In fact, I don't know that I've ever really used it. But what it does is, especially on certain photos, it adds a little organic feeling. Digital photos can sometimes be so perfect, so smooth, so sharp, so perfect that sometimes they feel like they may be to certain people, lack a little soul, whatever that means. So adding grain, excuse me, adding grain roughens up those smooth edges just a little bit. So uh, some people like it. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes it works. I wouldn't put it on a, a, a wedding couple photo, but uh, it was a photo I had here to demo for, um, for um, vignetting. Yeah, so that's the grain, that's the vignette, a uh, couple extra effects for you to uh, potentially use in your images. Uh, I use vignetting pretty commonly on just, I think, almost all my photos. And, uh, and then uh, grain I hardly ever use, but I, I know a number of photographers do. Um, if you can, again, it's another way you can do mood with grain. Uh, let's do this real quick. So we're just going to go into... Uh, uh, the color, well, no, we're not going to go color mixer. We're going to go to black and white. We're going to make this photo black and white, so we want it to feel old school. And then I'm going to come back down here to grain and turn that up a little bit. And, um, yeah, so now it feels a little more like maybe it wasn't a, a wedding from five years ago, but maybe from, well, except for the, the Xbox reference, but, uh, maybe from 25 or 30 years ago. Uh, it just feels more like a film photo. There you go. Oh yeah, we'll throw a little more vignette on there. There we go. Like it's an older lens. Easy. So you can tell stories this way. Add emotional content um, by pulling from people's memories and experiences of how this photo looks uh, brings a feeling to it. So that's vignette and grain inside of Lightroom CC. Um, if you have uh, ways you use these or tips or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Hope you like this. We've got more Lightroom CC stuff coming up. We're going to show you the radial filter and the graduated filter. And then one more, we'll show you how to do selective color. So tune into those videos coming up next.